Minister Becky clearly called members of the audience liars while he ranted at them incoherently at yet another no, ANC political behave, rally masquerading as a police in Biza. How much did we all as taxpayers pay for his political gathering, Minister? Sisman. Decent people are more than you. He here. insults every good SAPS member who is serious about crime. And he insults every neighborhood something. watch member and walking here. bus member to, who to went there to have a serious conversation about crime. Yes. No, he insults I their can't. hard work and he Why insults their intelligence. You, He's accomplice as Norman, the CPF me. chair, just... an old ANC political hack who hasn't given up his fantasy so of helping the ANC the steal the control election. of the Western Cap. And you know it's election time when Becky and Norman you say my name an unhealthy number of times. A little obsessed, I think. Maybe it's because Becky is still cross about the Camps Bay Beach debacle when he unlawfully tried to shut down a form shoot with a large number of his protection unit armed to the teeth and the city had to stop him to in court. carry out an unlawful action um, yes. that is contrary to a permit issued by the city, sir. I am placing that on record that if you're wrong, there, there will be consequences. Yes. Or maybe Norman is cross that we didn't let him use his own pseudo CPF called Mura to speak for the CPF in the community. Norman is also the chairperson of Mura, aka the Mitchell's Plain United Residents Association. But he doesn't live in Mitchell's Plain, but he's still the CPF chair. And now we discover that the majority of mural leadership are in fact ANC candidates in the upcoming election. Aish Norman. So this explains he's playing politics with crime and safety yesterday, but it doesn't excuse it. And it also doesn't excuse Minister clearly playing politics with the safety of people in Mitchell's Plain or anywhere else. Minister Clearly blasted the audience about people playing politics with crime and safety and then said we must all work together. But playing politics is pretty much most of what he did yesterday, as did Norman. Playing politics is when you attack people claiming their absence indicates they don't care. But if you didn't invite them, then you're the one preventing us from working together, Minister. Neither myself as maker member nor MEC Albert Fritz from province were invited. Pretty devious. In any event, I don't need an expensive Mbiza organized by Minister Clearly to speak to the community. I do that every day. On Thursday, I met and patrolled with Kusela Abashlali in Guguletu. We explored solutions to various issues while we engaged. Last night, I met and patrolled with the neighborhood watch in Montrose Park in Lentegere Mitchell's Plain, where we visited the site where a 29-year-old man was shot and killed by gangsters. Gangsters who were known to many in the community, which became clear as we walked and patrolled. I've been in Mitchell's Plain at least twice a month the last six months, and I've been everywhere else in the city as well. I don't just suddenly become visible at election time and start organizing in Bezos. Mitchell's Plain residents and neighborhood watchers must not easily forgive the minister's sidekick, Norman, for his cheap politicking. This is why I will respond to and meet those CPS that are sincere, but I'll focus my energy and time on the neighborhood watchers where the safety work is being done because of the incessant politicking as was on display yesterday by the CPF chair. Aside from his stranger comments about potholes and hijackings, Minister Clearly says the Western Cape is the most resourced province in the country. I don't believe that's true for a moment, based on the last policing figures reported by SAPS itself to the Provincial Standing Committee. His statement rings false when every police station we talk to is under-resourced with between 70 and 80 percent of their staff resources, never mind their lack of equipment and the complete overloading of the detectives with around 10 times more work than they can realistically handle. If what Minister Taylor said was even true, it would just mean that the whole of the country has been neglected, some parts even more neglected than Cape Town, according to him. If our policing resources look this grim, then the horror stories we hear about elsewhere in South Africa might even be true. And we haven't forgotten that Taylor and his colleagues in National Cabinet have cut the police budget over the next three years, which will make a bad situation even worse. Cutting the police budget to make up for other serious mistakes they've made with ESCOM and the SAA. Oh, and the looting of the country, of course. He says we must work together. Let me bury that lie right here. Metro Police Traffic and Law Enforcement work brilliantly with SAPS. They have a close relationship, and at several stations, the senior SAP staff have told me that they could not cope without the LEAP staff we have deployed there to their stations, or that LEAP helps them a great deal. But Minister Clearly must not confuse fair criticism for playing politics. As the mayoral committee member for safety and security in Cape Town, it's left to me to communicate on safety and security matters that pertain to the safety and welfare of the city and its residents. This is impossible to do without sometimes highlighting the crisis Minister Clearly and his political colleagues in the cabinet cause us. 
whether it is sustained budget starvation of SAPs by national government, false statements made by the national minister relating to the conduct of the city enforcement staff or their policies or powers, unlawful actions by the national minister in relation to the closure of permitted film shoots, the failures of policing relating to the release of gangsters after arrest by city enforcement agencies where such gangsters are not charged or detained, the alarming state of firearms in police custody being found in the possession of gangsters, attempts to strip away self-defense as the basis for firearm ownership, or in this case, the unconstitutional attempt to gain control of local government constitutional competencies like Metro Police and law enforcement.